Hello everyone. Today we will learn how to implement Perlin Noise in a C++ application. Perlin Noise is the foundation of most procedural terrain and structures you see in video games, like Minecraft, Terraria, and No Man's Sky. It is mostly used to generate random but realistic looking terrain. It is also common to layer multiple Perlin Noise functions on top of each other to create even more interesting terrain, which we will explore later. Perlin Noise was originally developed by Ken Perlin in 1983 for use in creating more realistic computer-generated textures for the movie Tron. Many advancements have been made since then to improve upon it, and the version we are using to generate noise is much faster than the original. The fast noise library that we are using also wasn't created just for the sake of it. It was created by Jordan Peck to help his team with their game, No Man's Sky. So now, let's start using it ourselves. First, we're going to go to this website in the description, and we'll be using C++ version. There is just one file here, so we are just going to copy and paste it into our application. After we've done this, we're going to first see if the noise is working correctly. You must pass in floats to the get noise function for it to work correctly, or you're going to get an error like you see here. We then need to set the srand variable to the current time so the seed is different every time you run the program. I will be using the same window setup as I did in my snake game tutorial which is linked above if you want to check it out. Just as before, we need to also write the function to paint to the screen and to take in user input, which we will call window proc. We are also using the buffering technique that we went over in the snake game tutorial to reduce lag. In the draw screen function, you can actually specify a different screen width and height if you want to, if you want to since it won't affect anything we do later. Next, we are going to add the global variables we need to draw onto the screen. After that, we go to our main function to call both the create screen and draw screen functions. If you run your program now, a window should pop up that is completely white. Now that we have our window, we can start drawing onto it. We now need to write a function to get a noise value with a pixel coordinates as the input, and another function to convert the noise float into a color object. Let's create a global variable to keep track of our noise object so we can modify it in real time later using the keyboard.
The seed is used to create an entirely different noise function every time. But it's also useful in games like Minecraft when you want to share a seed with your friends so they can generate the exact same world. The frequency determines how quickly the noise value changes from one location to its neighbor. A higher frequency means the values would be more different. And the noise type determines what noise function is used. Perler noise is the oldest and most common noise type, but there are many others in this library for you to choose from. Next, we will get a noise value from an input location. We are using the 2D Perlin noise function, but you can just as easily use a 3D version by passing in three values. Next, we will write the function to get the color from the noise, but for now, we will be outputting the value in grayscale. Later, we use this to make a more interesting output. For now, we will draw each pixel one after another onto the screen by creating a nested for loop and calling the functions we just created. We are using the setPixel function which is included in the Windows library. Now if you run the program, it should look something like this. It may be hard to visualize how this can be useful, but that is mostly because we are only using one layer of noise and we aren't coloring the pixels. You can imagine the white areas as water, the gray areas as land, and the black areas as mountains. If you're running this yourself, you will also notice that it is difficult to move the window around. This is because your computer is struggling to run the code we just wrote. Right now, we are calculating and drawing each pixel as fast as possible, and we are only doing one pixel at a time. If we aren't changing anything, then it shouldn't be recalculating any values since it will be the exact same. So to fix this, we will create an update screen function which we will use to make changes to the screen, and an update section function which we will use to update multiple pixels at the same time. We also need a new variable to store the color data we are creating and use that in our threaded update section function. I am setting up my function to use as many threads as my computer supports by using the hardware concurrency function. We are telling each thread to be responsible for calculating a set of rows of pixels on the screen and returning what their values should be. At the end of the update screen function, we are waiting for all the threads to complete before continuing. The update section function will have a similar nested loop like we had before but now we aren't drawing to the screen in the for loop. This is because we will now only be drawing to the screen in the draw screen function and only updating the screen in the update screen function. We will call the init and update screen function in our main function to get everything set up at the start. We also need to be calling the update screen function in our user input function so that the screen updates after we make changes. If we run the program now, it should be drawing on the screen like it did before, but the lag should be reduced a lot. Now let's add the ability to change the noise on screen in real time. I will be setting the up and down keys to control the frequency. I will also be adding functions to the FastWid library to get the current frequency. Now, when I run the program, the up and down keys essentially zoom in and out.
I'm also adding a button to change the noise seed and to change the noise type. Now I can run the program and press R and F to do that. Earlier, I mentioned that most games use multiple noise functions on top of each other to create more interesting terrain. So let's create another noise function just like the first one and add user input for that one as well. The way we combine these two noise functions is up to you, but usually they are scaled so that every additional layer contributes less and less to the final output. This allows us to have control over both the overall look for the terrain, but also the small details. I will give my first noise a weight of 0.75 and my second noise a weight of 0.25. I have also offset my noise function so that it outputs in the range of 0 to 1, since that will make it easier to understand later. I will also set the default frequency of the first weight to a larger value as well, since the one with the bigger weight should have the smaller frequency. Now I can control the two noise functions independently, although it still doesn't look like the terrain you would find in a video game. Let's add some color to it to make it look better. I'm telling it to use three different color functions depending on the value of the noise. There's also a gradient of color within each color group, but you could remove this gradient to give it a more flat feel. Now when we run our program, it kind of resembles Minecraft. Now the reason it doesn't look exactly like Minecraft is because our noise function is still way too simple. If you are interested in making something more interesting, I would recommend this video above where you can learn from a Minecraft developer about how his team developed the modern Minecraft terrain. I hope you all found this video about Perlo Noise interesting or perhaps useful in your own game development. As always, the link to the code is provided below, but please leave a comment if you have any questions or get stuck implementing this yourself. Anyway, hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time.